I wanted to do a video on antimatter and I wrote down a list of things I would want to talk about and I did the physicist thing where I was like, I'm going to talk about antimatter engines. I don't need to look that up. I get how it would work. It's probably a simple idea. It's fine. And then I went to film the video and I was like, I should probably Google that just to make sure. I don't want to make a fool of myself on the internet. And I found this article by Googling antimatter engine and it was on a website called HowStuffWorks.com, which perfect because I want to know how an antimatter engine will work. And it was called how an antimatter spacecraft will work, not how it could work or if it would work, but how it will work. And that's what I've been doing for the last two weeks. So. So let me just take you through the highlights of this article called How Antimatter Spacecraft Will Work on HowStuffWorks.com. And it's written by Kevin Bonsor and Yara Simone, and it's from August of 2023, which, yay, what a recent article. The most recent updated information on antimatter engines. This is so perfect. And let me just walk you through it. So they start by talking about the warp drive on Star Trek, which is not related to the antimatter engine on Star Trek, but I'll give it a pass, like fine, whatever. Uh, and then they just keep saying antimatter will make you go fast. It'll, it'll make you go fast and okay, I'm sure they'll explain that when they talk about the engine. That's perfect. They talk about what is antimatter and they say antimatter is the opposite of normal matter. And I'm like, oh, so this is an article for children. I mean, fine. It'll still probably explain the basic concepts, that's fine. It's not going to have research in it, but that's fine. And then it starts talking about Paul Dirac and negative mass and that that's incorrect. Okay. And then it talks about the types of antiparticles we've made on earth, the positrons, the antiprotons, the anti-hydrogen atoms. And it talks a lot about CERN, which is, has a particle accelerator, which can make antimatter. It talks about when antimatter comes in contact with normal matter, it explodes in a big explosion and that explosion makes you go fast. It's a big explosion, bigger than any scientist has ever seen. Big explosion. You go fast. And th that's kind of the whole article. And this was so confusing because I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> like it's in English. And I can read all the words, but when you put the sentences together, they don't mean anything. This article is called How an Antimatter Spacecraft Will Work, and yet it doesn't, it doesn't do what it says. It doesn't tell me that. It just says antimatter is the opposite of matter. It, it's made in, in CERN, and, and if you put it together with normal matter, it explodes. It uses words like pure radiation and superluminal and talks about negative mass and... So I did the normal thing. I did the normal thing. I investigated it. That's a normal thing to do instead of just clicking back and finding another article, right? If you scroll to the bottom of this article, there's a very interesting sentence which says, this article was updated in conjunction with AI technology, then fact-checked and edited by a How Stuff Works editor. And I don't believe you. I don't believe a human being has ever read this article because it doesn't make any sense. If it was edited, how, in what way, wouldn't the editor perhaps remove all the factual errors? So I did another normal thing and I copied this article into a Word document and it's about 1500 words, which definitely seems like you had an AI language learning model and you were like, please write me 1500 words on how a antimatter spacecraft will work. And it did that. And then when you remove like the captions to the images and all that stuff, you have about 1300 words, which I have highlighted into categories.
because I'm fun and stuff. Okay, so the first thing I did was highlight all the factual errors in green, and this is so surprising. Listen, I'm a little nitpicky here. Like, the Star Trek thing is wrong, but like, would you expect Kevin and Yara to have seen all of Star Trek and know the difference in the antimatter engine and the warp drive and actually what makes the Enterprise go fast? I don't know. And this, this video is not gonna be about particle physics. I'm not gonna go into why all these are factually incorrect, but let's just do one. Well, so this article says that antimatter is exactly what you think it is, the opposite of normal matter, and that's fine. Like, that's a fine definition for children. Like, a proton is a certain mass, it has a certain charge, and it's made up of three quarks. And an antiproton is the same mass, the opposite charge, and it's made up of three antiquarks. So they're opposite, right? Same mass, opposite charge. That's fine. But then in the very next paragraph, they say these antiparticles are literally mirror images of normal matter. And there's a thing in physics called chirality, where it talks about like the handedness of things. Like when you hold your left hand in a mirror, it looks like a right hand, right? They're, they're mirror images of each other. Right. Your right hand is not an anti-left hand. It's still a hand, right? The handedness on a proton is its spin, okay? So when you, you look in the mirror of a proton, you're seeing the opposite spin. Like, that's the handedness. It has nothing to do with the antiproton, which also has a spin and also has handedness. So this is just a very confusing, incorrect sentence. And it also goes against what you just said, which was that it's the opposite. And it's that kind of thing that makes me a little suspicious because I think an AI would catch that. I know I shit on AI a lot, but if you watched that video closely, you would see me say, these tools are useful. These tools, the ones that are trained well, produce good things. You just have to check the output for accuracy. You need an expert to check the results. You need an expert to check these results. And so I don't think this article was edited by an editor on HowStuffWorks.com because there's so many glaring just errors, the errors, there's so many errors. The things I've highlighted in pink are just like kind of unrelated to the article at hand. This article says it's gonna describe an antimatter engine and what it actually does is talk about Star Trek, incorrectly label what antiparticles are, does a bunch of definitions about this is when this particle was discovered. It talks about what CERN does, and then it just throws a bunch of like, it's as much energy as a light bulb. It's as much energy as 1000 suns and stuff. But they also just kind of throw things in there. Like, why not discuss the origin of gamma rays? It talks about in 1978, people finding antiparticles in the universe. And I just, that's not related. Like, are we going to drive to the center of the galaxy and pick up the antimatter and then we wouldn't have to make it? It doesn't make any sense. And again, AI is better than this, which makes me flip-flop. And my new working theory is that the editor read the AI article and found it dry. And so started inserting like a bunch of, it's just like this. It's just like this, which is somehow worse. Like, is the editor not a scientific journalist? Is it just a random person that's just like, ooh, you know what we could do? Add, add random sentences. And this theory is bolstered by my next highlighting, which is just for every time they repeat something. The amount of times they say antimatter will make you go fast without explaining how it will make you go fast because that would be explaining how the engine works. And I'm worried that that's too much to ask from an article titled, How Will an Antimatter Spacecraft Work? Uh, you can't explain how it will work. There's not enough time in the 1500 words. Instead, we'll say it makes you go fast seven different ways. I'll, I'll read you one. It's like the difference between driving an Indy race car and a 1971 Ford Pinto. In the Pinto, you'll eventually get to the finish line, but it'll take 10 times longer than in the Indy car. Why is an article from 2023 referencing a 50-year-old car? 
Is that a real car? Why would you name your car after a bean? Is that a thing made up by the AI or does that exist? Why would you add that in? What does that add? You're limited to 1500 words. That's about the length of an Instagram caption. And you think that sentence merits erasing all the information on, I don't know, answering the titular question, this is how the antimatter spacecraft will work. In orange are the definitions, which is a thing I think you limit with your AI. You just say like, please write an article of this length, only 20% definitions. That's the same thing you tell like ghost writers in books, right? And so that's what I think this is like, let's define a anti-proton and when it was discovered, and then we'll do an anti-hydrogen and we'll just define everything in the world instead of using simple language because this is an article for children, right? Right? And then in yellow is just how, how an antimatter spacecraft will work, except not really, it just lists three things you'll have. Like, oh, you'll have to have a magnetic field to hold in your fuel because your antimatter can't touch matter or it explodes. And then you'll have to you'll have to have a feed system to take the antimatter from the little trap to the engine. And then you'll have to have a magnetic rocket nozzle to push the explosion out. And you know, I'd be interested in, in why you need a magnetic trap for your antimatter or how the feed system works or why you need a magnetic nozzle. Why? Wouldn't that be an interesting thing to discuss in this article? Wouldn't that be fun? Or you can just talk about how many grams we'll need to go to Mars. You don't need to know how the engine works. You don't need to know any of that. It's fine, just it's gonna make you go fast. And it, the explosion's a lot of energy that makes you go fast. That's the article. <laughs> I've highlighted in red the funniest bit of this article because the whole article is like, here's how it will work. That's the title, how it will work. It says like, let's peer into the future a couple of decades and see what it'll be like when we have a working fully fledged antimatter engine. And then it just says, all of the antiprotons produced at CERN in one year would be enough to light a 100 watt electric light bulb for three seconds. So it's not gonna work, is it? Did you address this in the article about, you didn't, you didn't. How will it work? If it'll only power a light bulb for three seconds, how is it working? How will the engine work? That's the, that's the title of the article. How will it work? <sighs> so this is bad. It's a bad article. It's bad writing. And all the references are like 20 years old. Like, are you really referencing science missions from 2002? That's 20 years ago. What is this? Are they using a 20 year old AI to write this? Is that why it's so bad and the writing is so bad? Who is this for? And if you go to the How Stuff Works website, it's 100%, I think, for children, because when you click on it, there's like a little cite this article button and it pops up in MLA format and you can just copy and paste it into your Word document. But like children can read and this article is barely intelligible. So wouldn't they notice that it's really bad? There's a section on this website where you can report errors and I kind of just want to send the whole article and be like, it's an error that you posted this, was it an accident? Like it's been up since August 29th. Has anyone noticed? Like have they received a bunch of emails that are like, what is this? What is this garbage article that's on your page? It doesn't make any sense. How exactly will the antimatter spacecraft work? I'm still curious. The article didn't answer that question. I picture an eighth grader who's waited till like the last second to write his little homework assignment on antimatter spacecrafts and he gets this article and he's like I, I guess I just don't understand it and he just copies and pastes it into his assignment and then his teacher is like oh my god Billy this doesn't make any sense do you even understand what you're writing like if Billy turned in this article his teacher would call his parents and be like, I'm so concerned that Billy's not at an eighth grade reading level yet. This is incomprehensible. We need to like get him a special tutor outside of school hours. We might have to hold him back because this article doesn't make any sense. What he's written is barely sentences. We've been failing Billy. 
it just makes me kind of sad because I used to go to this website like 20 years ago. This website was started by a physics professor, a teacher who just like, I'd like to write fascinating articles on how stuff works. And I loved that shit when I was like 10 years old in the year 2000 on the early, early internet, I would be like, I do wonder how a microwave works. Cause I was in Kentucky and that's how I talked. And I would get on there and I would just read for days and days and days. Let me show you. Cause the wave back machine works. Okay. So I'm on the wave back machine and just got just look at the old internet look at the <laughs> just the font and the colors and like everything was set up like this like a like the same way you set up like a file system and the way advertisements used to work was like every time you loaded a page it would show you the ad so every article would be split into like 17 pages and you would just have to click the next page oh my gosh this just, this brings me back to being 10 years old and just like, I miss the old internet sometimes. Okay, uh, so this is what it looked like in like 2001. And then, okay, so now we're in 2007. How stuff works, now it has videos. It still has the Google search. They've decided to go with blue, which is also a thing. I feel like web pages used to be like, sepia and like yellow background and just like really old computer style and then they all shifted to blue but i thought that it was purchased by the discovery channel so we're gonna oh my gosh they have videos now <laughs> 2007 is when they get videos now okay here we go somewhere before 2010 howstuffworks.com was purchased by the discovery channel and it was a discovery company and they, I think they had, they still have like, they had show tie-ins, they had like podcast tie-ins and stuff. And isn't how this stuff goes on the internet. Like someone makes like the dream little website and it gets popular and they sell it to a giant company, which like good for that guy. Congratulations. That's perfect. But if we move forward even further, <laughs> you can just see that this website keeps getting more populated with ads just even now like if you compare the modern version of this article to the one with ad blocker turned off it's just like pop-ups and autoplay videos everywhere and it's just like how is anyone even supposed to read this garbage article that's barely english in the first place with all these ads but that's what's happening here you see lots of ads those weird <laughs> weird ads oh podcasts okay so it's 2013 that's early for podcasts I don't think I've ever listened to any of these podcasts it's fine I'm sure they're fine and then we can jump forward to we jump forward to 2021 and this no longer is a discovery thing so discovery I don't know as a company did it shut down did it did it get sold but now we're here and So I think astute viewers will have realized that I wasn't doing the Wayback Machine on HowStuffWorks.com. I was doing the Wayback Machine on this specific article. This specific article that says it was written on August 29th of 2023 was on HowStuffWorks.com in 2001. This is not a new article. This is a 20 year old article. <sighs> Which means it was written by a person. I owe a big apology to Kevin. I'm sorry I said your article was so bad that an AI couldn't have even written it, but I was right. So this is not Kevin's fault, right? It's a really bad article and he wrote it and it's really, really bad. But I went to his university's newspapers archive and I found the previous articles that Kevin had written as a journalism major and they're totally fine. They're totally written in English. They have a point and a flow and one can read them and understand what's happening. So this is not Kevin's fault. Kevin is not a scientific journalist or he wasn't at this point literally 20 years ago. Has no one read this article in 20 years? 
like I assume Kevin college grad was applied to a job that was like write exactly 1500 words it can't be more than 20 percent definition once a week and we'll give you whatever a salary was in 2000 like ten dollars I don't know and he he was probably given a topic like antimatter engine and he's not a scientist so he just wrote what he thought would would be okay for that and he sent it to presumably his editor and his editor didn't read it and he was just like slap it up it's fine it's the year 2000 surely this won't exist you know in 20 years whatever and like I said I liked this website 20 years ago and this whole time I was like well this is how it is now it must have been good when I liked it as a 10 year old and it turns out no it wasn't did anybody read the articles that the authors they like outsourced the freelancers were writing has that just sat on this website for 20 years the text of this article has not changed in 20 years except for adding the AI component. What did the AI do? It's the same article. It didn't even update the references. It didn't even update with recent space missions or recent like enhancements in how we make antiparticles. What did the AI do? And what about Yara, our second author? She was added in this year. She was added with the update in August, 2023, but I know she didn't write anything because the text is the same as it was 20 years ago. And I don't think she read it because if she read it, surely she wouldn't have put her name on it or she would have rewritten it because it's really, really bad. So I, I owe Kevin an apology because I don't, <laughs> this is a shitty article. It's really, really bad. It doesn't belong on the internet, but it's also written by someone who is not trained to do this. And someone should have guided him. Like when he got this job, his editor should have been like, whoa, this is not, this is not good enough to be put on the internet. And they should have coached him. They should have worked with him to get a better article. Instead, Kevin has hundreds of articles on this site. When I searched his name on the How, How Stuff Works website, I saw so many articles and they were all plus and. So they must have had a recent rebrand where they had all these articles updated, even though, as I said, this one has no updates at all. And they just added a second author to make it seem like someone had worked on this stuff recently, because this is a dying website, right? No one is going to this website. The Discovery Channel probably sold it off and whoever bought it is just running off the clicks that they get. They're not going to add anything. It's just like, we're going to leave this corpse here that people will click on because they remember how stuff works as like a thing and they're going to click on any article and they're going to be like, oh, this is, this is just garbage and they're going to feel bad and they're going to backspace and find an actual article on the topic they were interested in searching. If we go back to that eighth grader, these articles do read like, like an eighth grader was tasked with a topic that they are not interested in and they waited till the last minute and they are just writing something they know doesn't make any sense in like hopes of partial credit. Like there's this thing that I noticed that people do, I call it like science talk, where they don't know the answer to a question, but they just, it will work better if I give you an example. If you watched my video on dark matter, I listed a bunch of evidence for dark matter. Now, if I gave you a quiz right now and I said, Give me an example of evidence for dark matter. What would you say? If you saw that video, if you didn't see the video, I, you probably don't know, it's fine. What would you say? So if this was a quiz, a 10 out of 10 answer would be like, one example of evidence for dark matter is the rotation curves of galaxies. Stars at the outskirts of galaxies rotate much faster than we would expect based on the amount of matter we can see. So there must be some matter we can't see. They call that dark matter. Perfect. 10 out of 10 answer. What if you just wrote down like rotation curves? I mean, fine. I like a full sentence. I like when you demonstrate that you know what you mean by rotation curves, but like five out of 10. Okay. In real college courses, you get like this science speak answer, which would be something like in the 20th century, 
scientists observed something interesting. The phenomena, hereto whither informed as dark matter, could not be observed with normal methods. As a result, new innovative techniques need to be developed to observe this heretoforth called dark matter. Scientists have nomenclatured this as dark matter because it is dark to the eyes, unlike light, which is observable. And they would just write that down. And that is English. Those are words, but that sentence means nothing. Zero out of 10 points. I asked, list some evidence of dark matter. And they said, dark matter is a thing you can't see. Zero points. These articles read like that. <laughs> just like someone's like, yeah, 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 I can, I can do time travel. Doop, 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 doop. And I feel bad. But also, they publish these. I don't want to be mean, but they're really bad. Why, why does this website exist? Why do these articles exist? Who, who is this for? So my new theory is that all the articles that have ever been on this website that weren't written by the original guy who was very passionate about this project are by recent grads that they can pay very little to produce whatever and they just put it on the website and no one ever reads it again. This article has sat in the same state for 20 years and no one has ever read it. No one has ever read it because how could you read it and not send an email immediately to the website and be like, hey, there's many factual errors. It doesn't answer the question it poses in the title. This is a very bad article. So I just have to imagine that no one's ever read it. And I don't blame the authors of these articles because writing is very hard. I am a bad writer. In fact, I would like to compare this article to an article I wrote in the year 2011, when I was also 20 years old and will live on the internet forever because the professor in the course put it on the internet and there it is with my name on it and, and that sucks. Okay, here's the article. It's called Scientific Literacy, colon, Why It Matters by Angela Collier, April 21st, 2011. Your girl is nothing if she's not on brand. That's right. I have been talking about science education and scientific literacy and scientific communication for like a decade. Yep, that's my personality. Sorry, I will link this garbage article below if you wanna read it and make fun of me, it's fine. But it's the same thing. It's the same kind of, oh, this is how a scientist would write. Here's my point, aren't my jokes? It's terrible, it's a terrible article. This needs an editor. Just like this entire website needs an editor. This is so bad. I talk about those power balance bands, which is like a vintage, a vintage scam, but it was like this plastic bracelet and they were like, your frequency, it balances you. And it was just like plastic. And these athletes would wear them. Bill Clinton wore one. And it's just like, it's a plastic bracelet. Obviously it does nothing. And the whole point was like, this is why scientific literacy is important because you can get scammed and people will steal your money by telling you bullshit. And this article is very bad. There's one line I regret specifically. I'll read it to you. It's pretty hard to believe that in 2010, a former porn star convinced a little under 8% of Americans that vaccines cause autism. Um, I regret the choice of the word porn star because the problem is of course not that Jenna McCarthy was a porn star. I don't care about that. Be a porn star. I support sex workers. It's totally fine. The fact is that what I was what I was trying to say is that you shouldn't take medical advice from people who aren't doctors. And that point still stands. I can't believe it's 10 years later and Jenny McCarthy still walks around. I can't believe she shows her face. Like she literally is responsible for the deaths of children from preventable illnesses and she just gets to walk around and go to restaurants and I'm still salty about it and I don't like it. This is why scientific literacy is important. But this is a bad article. It's particularly bad. My solution was like, just teach kids science, which is like so lazy. It's such a bad solution. This is also a bad article. 
I'm sorry, Kevin. We all wrote bad articles 10 to 20 years ago. I'm sorry that yours got updated. And I'm sorry that mine is deep, deep, deep in search results, whereas yours is always on the first page of Google, and it has been for 20 years. If you Google antimatter engine, antimatter spacecraft, that sucks. That article does not explain how an antimatter spacecraft will work, and yet it is always on the first three-ish Google results. It has been for 20 years. The article says nothing. It's a garbage article, and yet it's the first thing people click on. It's like this whole website, instead of paying writers to write the article, which is literally the product they're selling, they just paid like SEO engineers to make sure that it's always on the top. It's always on the top. It doesn't matter that it says garbage. You click on it. And that's what makes me mad because that means this website is a scam and they have scammed me for the last time. And I'm telling you now, never click on this website. It's always a scam. They stole from me. They stole my time. I just wanted to learn how antimatter engines work, I clicked on an article titled, How Will Antimatter Spacecraft Work? How Will They Work? And it didn't tell me. I wasted seconds of my life scrolling through incorrect Star Trek information to be met with incorrect physics information and it didn't tell me how the engine worked. Scam, it's a scam. And this is a dying website, like I said, they are just living off the corpse of the SEO clicks where you click on it, you read an article for four seconds and you're like, ah, oh, God damn it. And click back to find an actual good article. Are we just going to let these SEO corpses ruin the internet? Are we just going to let these exist at the top of our Google results? Are we going to let this garbage ruin the internet? I guess. <sighs> That's the thing though, right? No one's, no one's gonna be like, well, take the website down because it lied to you. And I don't think we should take the website down because it lied to us either, but it just sucks. It just sucks that like, they hire the smartest minds of our generation. You might think smart people do physics and medical science and doctoring, but no, no. The smartest minds of our generation are doing SEO and figuring out how to put ads on the ads on the ads so that you can never see anything without being penetrated by what your company wants you to see. Do we just let them do that? Would the solution be to just have government grants where we take all the SEO engineers and just give them money to follow their passions? Why, why don't they make better video games? They could just make video games. That'd be great. Why is it this? Why are they pushing this onto us? This is garbage. But I can see how someone would say it doesn't matter because like we're adults, we click on it we read it for 10 seconds, we realize it's garbage and we angrily click the back button, but like they just stole our time, right? It's not that big of a problem, right? Let's read how 2011 Angela Collier defined scientific literacy. Scientific literacy means that a person can ask, find, or determine answers to questions derived from curiosity about everyday experiences. <laughs> That's such a bad sentence. It means that a person has the ability to describe, explain, and predict natural phenomena. Keep with the commas, Angela. You need an editor. Scientific literacy entails being able to read with understanding articles about science in the popular press and to engage in social conversation about the validity of the conclusions. Scientific literacy implies that a person can identify scientific issues underlying national and local decisions and express positions that are scientifically and technologically informed. A literate citizen should be able to evaluate the quality of scientific information on the basis of its source and the methods used to generate it. Scientific literacy also implies the capacity to pose and evaluate arguments based on evidence and apply conclusions from such arguments appropriately. And because of the way I understood writing in 2011, I have this little link to the National Science Education Standards and I bet I just copied that information and then thesaurusized it and that's what I just read to you. But you get it, right? Scientific literacy. 
If you Google, are Americans scientifically literate, you will see a research study from the Pew Foundation in 2019, and they're like, oh my god, you guys, Americans are so scientifically literate. Yay! But I disagree with that. Um, I don't disagree with their study, I disagree with the conclusions. So they did a big huge survey of a bunch of bunch of people, and they gave them all multiple choice questions like, explain human evolution and they had to pick a b c or d and like explain how vaccines work a b c or d and people did really well on those but i don't think multiple choice tests can determine how scientifically literate someone is it determines how good they are at answering multiple choice tests um there was a great quote in the npr article about this peer research study where it was like if you ask americans how evolution works you're not really asking them anything about science. You're just asking them what religion they are. Scientific literacy is a very hard thing to measure and study. I would say that I like my definition from the article, but it could use some edits. <laughs> but I would expect a scientifically literate person, someone who knows nothing about particle physics, someone who knows nothing about Star Trek, or like engines should be able to read this article, you know, how an antimatter spacecraft will work, and they should be able to realize, not knowing any of the science is wrong in the article, they should realize that that's a bad article because they should be like, okay, this article says antimatter makes you go fast, and it says the explosions are big, but it's missing this middle piece. This article is a bad science article because it doesn't explain how the engine works. And a scientifically literate person knowing nothing about physics should read that article and come to that conclusion. This happens to me a lot with biology articles. I've been trying to teach myself molecular biology and it's very difficult for me and I now understand why all those pre-med students were always carrying around like giant flashcard decks. But sometimes I'll click on an article and I'll be reading it and because it's a topic I'm not informed about, I will be like, wait, this is confusing. And then this thing happens where I'm like, oh no, I'm just an idiot. I can't understand this article. But you know, sometimes I'm not an idiot. The article is garbage written by AI and checked from 20 year old information. And because I'm scientifically literate, or at least I consider myself scientifically literate, I don't know how you measure it. I don't, if the government gave me 18 months and $700,000, I would develop a test for it. So hit me up, NSF. But I would consider myself scientifically literate. So when I'm reading those medical articles that are bad, it takes me a couple seconds to be like, oh wait, this doesn't make sense. Like they're just defining things a bunch of different times or they're, they're not explaining the mechanism so I can't follow it. And you have to be scientifically literate to be like, okay, I don't understand, but it's not because I don't understand. It's because the information is being presented poorly. And I do not think most Americans have that skill. I'm going to give you an anecdote because like I said, I don't think this topic has been studied in the way I would consider a successful study of scientific literacy. I have taught college courses in multiple different states at multiple different universities. And every time I teach an entry level college course, the first thing I do on the first day is I give a homework assignment that's like four algebra questions because a lot of people are just like shocked and surprised that something like astronomy or biology 100 is going to have math in it. Math is really important in science. It's always going to be there, guys. But the bottom part, I would put on like a little simple line plot like this. And I would ask these college students, which means, you know, they graduated with a high school diploma. These people have applied and been accepted to into universities and they've signed up for a science course, which means they think they'll be able to do well in this science course. I would ask them to look at this line plot. So I would ask three things. And the first is like, what does this plot say? And it would say, peak traffic times are between 6 and 9 a.m. and 4 and 6 p.m. or something like that. And then I would say, if it's 10 a.m., how many cars are on the road? And that would require them to like draw a little line up and draw a little line over and get the data point. And then I would ask like an analysis question, like, why do you think there are two peaks on this graph? And there are hundreds of right answers to that question, but you would expect someone to say like, 
the peaks are associated with people going to work and coming home from work. That's when most people are on the road. That's why the peaks are highest right there. Yay, 10 out of 10 on the graph quiz. But the thing is, I would give this to a class of like 110 students and like 30% of them would not get those questions right. Like 30% of the college freshmen could not read a graph that looks like this and they're in a science class. And I don't think it means that 30% of people are stupid or those 30% of people could never be scientists. It's just that they're not scientifically literate. Maybe they learned how to read a graph one time in seventh grade and they haven't thought about it since and they don't know how to do it. People would come to like my office hours and they would say, you can't give us a homework like this. You didn't even go over how to do this. And I would be like, thanks so much for coming in. Let's learn how to read graphs, an important necessary skill for every adult human to have, you know, in case there's a global pandemic or something and people have to read graphs. And so when you think about these articles and people are like, well, the eighth graders will figure it out. It's good for them to learn which articles are good and which articles are bad. I'm not thinking about the eighth graders. I'm thinking about like, like just a normal human person who's like, I'd like to write a sci-fi story. I'm gonna look up how an antimatter engine works to build the background to my story. And they click on this article and they can't recognize that it's a bad article and that it's garbage writing and it doesn't make any sense. I'm so sorry, Kevin. And they just think, I must be too stupid to get this. I don't understand how these antimatter engines work. And I just read an article called How an Antimatter Spacecraft Will Work. And I don't understand it. I must be stupid. And that sucks because they're not stupid. They're just reading a garbage article that doesn't explain it. And that's the problem with this. These whole things are a scam and I don't like it. And it's making everything bad. An antimatter engine is a pretty simple thing to explain. And I think you could explain it on an eighth grade level. And why is this the first link? Why is this the first thing that people search? Because it's a tragedy that someone would just sit down and be like, I'm gonna learn something right now. And then they click on this and they don't understand and they feel embarrassed. That sucks. I hate it. It's a scam. Nobody ever click on this website again. Like and subscribe <laughs> and my next video will be antimatter. If you watched this video and you were just so pissed that I never explained what antimatter was and I never explained why an antimatter engine would ever work, check out next week's video. If you're in the future, hopefully future Angela was also cognizant enough to put the link to that next video in, in the description so that if you're watching it and it's like 2025, that video already exists. But if you're watching it in 2023, it doesn't exist yet. So, so be on the lookout, I guess.